Struggling with hysteria, Sabina Spielrein is admitted to a hospital and placed under the care of Dr. Carl Jung, who has initiated the use of Dr. Sigmund Freud's talking therapy for some of his patients. In the opening scene, we meet a woman named Sabine Spielrein who struggles with her emotions. Small things easily upset her. Because of this, in 1904, she's taken to Bergolzi, a well-known mental hospital in Zurich, Switzerland. Sabine is diagnosed with hysteria, a common condition at the time, and she's about to start treatment with a Swiss doctor, Carl Jung. In their first meeting, Dr. Carl positions himself between Sabine and notices her difficulty in answering questions as she frequently stammers. The next day, they take a walk in the woods, and during this, Carl discovers Sabine's remarkable ability to predict people's words before they speak. Sabine explains that she has an inner angel who communicates with her in German and helps her make these predictions. Upon hearing this, Dr. Carl suggests that her talent could be very useful for a career in medicine, which is her dream. As they continue talking, Sabine drops her coat on the ground. Dr. Carl picks it up and cleans it with his walking stick. Surprisingly, this upsets Sabine, and she tells him to stop rudely. Several days later, Carl discovers that Sabine is well-educated with a degree in medicine. Recognizing her intelligence and vitality, he offers her the opportunity to assist in his experiments. Sabine is excited about the chance to work with such a respected scientist and accepts without hesitation. The story then shifts to Carl's wife, Emma, who has recently given birth to a beautiful baby girl. Carl is thrilled about the arrival, so he visits the delivery ward to see his newborn. However, he notices that Emma is unhappy because she had hoped for a different gender, as she had promised. In response, Carl comforts Emma, encouraging her not to dwell on such thoughts. Amidst these events, Carl and Sabine continue their therapy sessions, during which he uncovers the root cause of her condition. He explains that Sabine's problems began when her father mistreated her. He used to be harsh and forced her to do things she didn't like. This affected her, and even a simple action like Carl helping her with her coat earlier had a significant impact. With this revelation, Dr. Carl arranges a meeting with Dr. Sigmund Freud, a renowned Austrian physician, to discuss their patients and find the most effective path toward their recovery. As the doctors engage in their conversation, they exchange views and analyze each other, leading to a lengthy discussion that stretches on for 13 uninterrupted hours. Despite this, they aren't tired and decide to meet again soon. It appears they are headed for a collaborative effort. Later, Carl meets with Sabine and shares the details of his conversation with Dr. Freud. As they talk, they discover their shared interests and grow closer. One day, Dr. Freud has to leave on an urgent business trip and writes a letter to Carl, asking him to look after a patient named Dr. Otto Gross, an unstable psychoanalyst known for his brilliance and womanizing tendencies. In the letter, Dr. Freud provides all the details about Otto, including the peculiar fact that he resorts to biting when he becomes angry. Out of friendship, Carl agrees without hesitation. Carl then attends a session with Otto, hoping to use his therapeutic talking method to help the patient. During this session, Otto reveals his lustful nature, bragging about his numerous relationships and the children he has fathered with them. He also suggests to Carl that having multiple partners keeps a person healthy, while having only one causes headaches, a philosophy still endorsed today by a person named Dr. Tate. The next day, Sabina actively assists Carl in his research and even shares a few jokes to keep his spirits up. She has started to recover from her mental condition. On the other hand, Carl's mind occasionally wanders back to Otto's words. He finds himself gazing at Sabina for a moment, but manages to maintain control over his impulses. That evening, Carl has another therapy session with Otto, Otto asks if Carl has ever been involved in intimate relationships with his patients. Carl responds negatively and poses the same question to Otto. In response, Otto reveals that he manipulates his patients into thinking that not wanting to engage in intimate relations with him is an illness. He uses this approach on many women he meets, and it often works. 
Otto boasts that he has been involved with more than 100 women. The next morning, Carl meets Sabina at a park, and they begin discussing personal matters. Sabina shares that she has little experience with relationships, which she believes contributes to her feelings of depression and anxiety. She expresses her desire to explore this aspect of her life soon. When Carl hesitates, Sabina takes the initiative and kisses him unexpectedly. She then invites Carl to her place later that evening for a more intimate encounter. In a therapy session, Otto encourages Carl to consider Sabina's desires and act on them. However, Carl remains committed to his principles. He doesn't want to compromise his values, and he is aware of the ethical concerns associated with becoming involved with a patient. Yet, as Otto persistently shares his own experiences, Carl's determination starts to waver. Ultimately, Carl gives in to his desires. When Otto's behavior becomes uncontrollable, Carl rushes to Sabina's place and becomes emotionally involved with her. This marks the beginning of their connection, and over time they form a closer bond. Emma gave Carl a boat with red sails as a surprise. Carl really wanted this boat for a long time. Emma thought Carl was a great man and that he deserved good things. Carl felt bad because he was not being honest with his wife. So he talked to Sabina, who he had a secret relationship with, and said they should stop it. But Sabina convinced him to keep going and do something different in their relationship. Next, Dr. Freud came back from a business trip. He talked to Carl about their ideas on people's minds, but they argued a lot, and it made their friendship difficult. Freud heard a rumor that Carl was seeing one of his patients in a romantic way. Carl said it wasn't true and explained he was just helping the woman a bit. After their meeting, Carl realized he couldn't hide his secret anymore. He decided to stop seeing Sabina, which made her very sad. A few days later, Sabina was very angry and went to Carl's office. She accused him of telling her mother about their secret relationship and called him a traitor. Carl told her that her mother knew already from a letter. He said he would only be her doctor now, not her secret friend. This made Sabina very mad, and she cut Carl's face with a knife before leaving. Later, Sabina writes a letter to Dr. Freud, asking for a meeting to discuss her connection with Carl. After reading her letter, Freud writes to Carl to inquire if what Sabina is saying is true, but Carl denies any involvement. He claims Sabina is spreading false information to harm his life. Due to their close friendship, Freud believes Carl and sends a letter to Sabina. He mentions he can't meet her at the moment due to his work, but suggests they try to resolve their issues without his intervention. Overwhelmed by the situation, Sabina goes to Carl's office once more, only to find out he's leaving the hospital. He's heading to the United States for a major conference. Sabina is upset and reprimands Carl for lying to Freud about their affair. She insists he write a letter to Freud, telling the truth about their relationship. Sabina also reminds Carl that she could have damaged his reputation, but chose not to. Hearing all this, Carl finally agrees and sends a letter to his Austrian friend, revealing the whole truth. When Freud reads the letter, he feels betrayed but not surprised. He writes a letter to Sabina, apologizing and admiring her way of resolving the conflict. The story then moves forward a few years. Sabina travels to Carl's house in Switzerland to work on her research. As they work together, they remember their past, including the various places they had spent time together. They decide to create more memories by being together once more. Later, Sabina decides to leave Zurich after finishing her studies and move to Vienna. This decision deeply affects Carl and he asks her to stay, but Sabina remains firm in her choice. Two more years pass, and Sabina, now a qualified psychiatrist, resides in Vienna, where she meets with Freud. During their conversation about psychoanalysis, Sabina expresses her support for Freud, but also stresses the need for cooperation between Freud and Carl for the advancement of psychoanalysis. However, Freud doesn't seem interested in reconciling with Carl. They've grown so distant that they don't even want to see each other. A year later, Sabina visits Emma at her home. Sabina is now married to a Russian doctor and expecting a child, with a preference for a baby girl. While they talk, 
Emma reveals that Carl's mental state has been deteriorating since his rift with Freud. She asks Sabina to talk to him. Meanwhile, Carl is quietly sitting by a peaceful river. He has distanced himself from his research and is no longer productive. Shortly after, Sabina approaches him and starts a conversation. Carl shares that he's been troubled by apocalyptic dreams that disrupt his sleep. Sometimes, he envisions the entire city being devastated by a massive flood that could destroy the world. Sabina finds the topic uninteresting and swiftly changes it, informing Carl that she is returning to Russia with her husband. She asks about his new partner, and Carl tells her the person is named Tony, who somewhat resembles Sabina. He says that Tony reminds him of the good moments he shared with Sabina. Carl admits that his love for Sabina has helped him grow as a person, but acknowledges that he can't change the situation. After their talk, Sabina boards a carriage and leaves the city, while Carl remains lost in his thoughts. In the film's closing remarks, the destinies of the four analysts are revealed. Otto tragically died from starvation in Berlin in 1920. Freud, forced out of Vienna by the Nazis, passed away from cancer in London in 1939. Sabina, after training numerous analysts in the Soviet Union, met a tragic fate along with her two daughters when they were shot by the Nazis in 1942. Meanwhile, Carl managed to recover from a nervous breakdown and later gained recognition as a prominent psychologist on a global scale before his passing in 1961. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell icon, and stay connected with us.